All right, diving into our second article to discover this week, headline, new lawsuit alleges poppy soda's health claims are bogus. This is out of Food & Wine, one of our favorites. And it is bad news for poppy heads. It is bad news for poppy heads. So poppy is the beverage company behind the viral prebiotic soda alternative. They launched in 2020 and they combine fruit juice, apple cider vinegar, and inulin prebiotics. Because so, they advertise themselves at a soda alternative and quote, gut healthy. Well, they are facing a class action consumer fraud lawsuit alleging that it misrepresents that beverage's gut health claim. First off, do you drink poppy? No, I don't. I don't like sparkling during like, like water. I don't, I don't like, like any flavored fun waters. And cute little cans. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Anything that says gut healthy is a no for me. There's actually a funny <laughs> quote in here that I want to share later that I related to so much, but I don't want to give it away yet. I'm not there yet. But a little bit about this brand. Everyone is drinking it. Everyone but me, apparently. I'm not um, drinking it has it some either. really Oh, okay, good. So Natalie's not cool either. No. Good to know. <laughs> well, I mean that gets a get a bit carried away. That's not why I'm not drinking it. <laughs> But everyone that's cool is drinking it. Kylie Jenner's drinking it. Post Malone, J Lo, like all the celebs are poppy heads, as you, as you call stated, yourself. Brand. As they've been named. Yeah, I actually saw. I don't know if you would know. Do you know who Alex Earl is? Yeah, she mm-hmm. just bought into shares. I think or became some sort of. I think a shareholder. So they're saying it's gut healthy, and apparently it's not. Apparently there are only two grams of prebiotics per can, which according to the suit is not enough to make a difference. Their competitors, on the other hand, Olipop, contain nine grams of prebiotic fiber per, per can, which is enough to actually make a difference. So the suit is basically saying you would have to drink so many cans of poppy to actually be gut healthy that you would be damaging your gut because of how much sugar you would be taking in. Yeah, they actually had a nutritionist in the article, which, you know, I'm sure you appreciate as much as I did. And she said poppy is, quote, basically sugared water, which is actually going back to why I don't drink it because and I kind of said this last week when we were talking about Subway And I feel like it's probably said every single episode when we talk about like, I don't know, fast food or, you know, food that isn't of super, I guess, food that falls under the affordability and price pillars for me. I guess I'm not one of those people that's duped into thinking there's a healthy soda just because the can says like healthy on it. If it tastes like a soda, it's a soda. That's how I feel about this. Like you're not, you're not going to be able to produce something. I've had poppy before. I've tasted it. You're not going to be able to have something that tastes like that. That is quote unquote, a soda alternative and have it be healthy for you. So yes, again, on one hand, I can see where this, this plaintiff is coming from, you know, saying that it's not healthy and that she was duped into it by the branding on the can. But on another hand, I'm also like, hello, it's it's soda. Like it's like the nutritionist said, it's just sugared water. No, that was literally my thoughts exactly. Who is drinking this thinking you are getting like a health beverage? I'm also like, if you want a prebiotic, like you should go find a really great yogurt, you know? Like there's a lot of other options out there besides like basically, yeah, it's sugared water, soda. I loved at the very end the um the writer of this article actually put Diet Coke anyone. And that was like literally my <laughs> thoughts. When people give me crap about Diet Coke and then I see them like drinking other drinks that are like sugary drinks, I'm like, it's kind of like the co- pot calling the kettle black, you guys. Like these, I just think if you're drinking anything besides like water with lemon or milk or, you know, I don't want to throw shade on orange juice, although, you know, orange juice, people have things to say about that as a drink as well. But like you're drinking a soda yeah. of some form or another. That's what you're drinking. And you're drinking it and it costs a lot of money. So a 12 pack is $30. Yeah, I thought that was crazy. To the site. That's also why That's I'm not insane. buying poppy. <laughs> If no I had a kidding. poppy head in my house, I'd be like, figure it out. Break your habit. We, we no, can't afford poppy. Was, <laughs> remind me to never give my daughters poppy because I'd be like, I'm sorry. You can't afford that. <laughs> you can't afford to drink that. So on a more serious note of this branding, it actually made me think of something. We saw a reel that we sent back to enforce to each other. I don't remember which one of us found it. But it talked about, and this is something we have alluded to on the podcast and something I think we want to deep dive, um, cough, cough discos and something exciting and new we're bringing to you guys in July. So watch for this. But there's a difference between what food companies can brand and say about themselves. And there is between what a dairy can say about themselves and how beef and other like animal proteins can market themselves and say about themselves. And I just think this is a bigger conversation that is going to only come to the surface more and more as these lawsuits pop up. I mean, this is not the first lawsuit we've seen. I actually talk a little bit about this in my keynote. 
is that I do think some of this green washing will will start to decrease because we are seeing more lawsuits come out. But I think it needs to be noted. I think the general public needs to know and understand that these food companies can brand themselves and say whatever it is they want about themselves in not the same way and playing field that, like I mentioned, beef, eggs, dairy, pork, et cetera, can. And it, it's it's wildly different. I feel like this is like a hill I die on about marketing and how insane it is, like when people kind of like throw shade on dairy. And I'm going to say this about almond milk, and I don't want people coming for me, the almond people. I'm not saying almond milk is bad or good or anything. <laughs> But almond milk can say whatever truly they want about their product. They can also like make comparisons to milk um, and, you know, have, you know, different marketing advertisements around that. Dairy cannot do the same. Like USDA is the regulator for all marketing for beef, dairy, anything that's a commodity, which is, you know, the things that you just listed. And so dairy has to send every single advertisement it wants to release through USDA. It's absolutely insane. I'm, you know, I'm on the dairy board. I see it like firsthand. And we can't say anything like we can't make comparisons. Like, did you know there's more protein in cow's milk than almond milk? Like, You literally can't say that. You cannot put down another industry. And it's really frustrating to me that we're not all playing by the, the same set of marketing rules. Mm-hmm. Amen to that, sister. Um, I was shocked. Usually when we see this kind of lawsuits and we cover them here on the podcast, Usually the company never responds. Usually they have nothing, you know, it's like, so Poppy was reached out to and we haven't heard back or, you know, no claim was made. Poppy did respond. They said, quote, we are proud of the Poppy brand and stand behind our products. We are on a mission to revolutionize soda for the next generation of soda drinkers. And we have diligently innovated to provide a tasting experience that millions of people have come to enjoy. We believe the lawsuit is baseless and we will vigorously defend against these allegations, end quote. Do you know about the history of Poppy yes. and like its founders? Yes, I was going to say, we're picking on Poppy but after their statement, which I thought was pretty well, well written and, and, um, and what, now that I know their story, I mean, Poppy, like, I kind of like Poppy. I kind of like their founders. I kind of like their story. Yeah. It is a mom and pop thing. It is still privately owned, which is shocking in the beverage industry. Every beverage is owned by, you know, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, like, you know, the big players. They are not. They were founded by a husband and wife duo based in Austin, and they were originally on Shark Tank. Mm-hmm. And I actually watched the episode last so night getting I. ready for this. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. We should have known that. I love I Shark Tank, I though. So it, I was like, yeah, heck yeah, I, I want to watch this. I love Shark Tank, too. I, I'm guessing I had watched this, um, and I just didn't realize because it was not called Poppy. It was called Mothers, and it was in a glass bottle, and it was one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and they got a shark investor, and it propelled their business forward. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, all the sharks were out. It was quick. They were like, nope, 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 nope. And then the last guy he was in and he was sold. And I thought it was like power of rebranding. I think what they had before was it was very like artisanal feeling. Um, If you could see. Very farmer's market. Yes. um, Just a very different feel than Poppy, obviously. And I think, you know, branding is like something I obsess over and love. So I thought that was like really fun to see and kind of hear actually the shark head who was helping them talk about some of the strategy behind rebranding and why they chose to go the route with Poppy. Um, I also think what's crazy about Poppy is social media has helped build them, which is kind of another thing that you and I talk a lot about because like social media is definitely in our wheelhouse. But I found this example that said the founder, Allison, posted a video on a whim and within 24 hours, Poppy had seen an additional 100,000 in sales off of TikTok. And I thought that was wild. And it just goes to show that some of the people out there that are like, you know, social media doesn't work or doesn't understand social media as like the branding, branding, marketing powerhouse tool it is. Poppy, I think, is an example that social media helped absolutely fuel and build them. Oh, absolutely. It's like incredible what they have done. Going back to the Shark Tank, one of the things I thought was interesting, the investor right away was like, what's your exit strategy? Like every beverage gets bought out. And actually, in February of 2024, Coca-Cola was looking into buying Poppy. And I'm so curious what this suit will do. Um, and just like what is going on in the background there. I almost wonder if maybe this suit, like if this was timed accordingly because of a Coca-Cola buyout. But I am so curious if they will ultimately end up selling out to Coca-Cola or not. So only time will tell, I feel like. It's funny you brought this up because this is another thing we want to deep dive in a new exciting thing we are bringing to you, discos. The biggest players in the orange juice industry are PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, and Dr. Pepper. And I am not shocked, but I am also shocked. 
And I think the average person shopping orange juice on the shelf would be shocked that those are the three biggest players in the orange juice industry. And like you said, I think people would be shocked to understand that Poppy is actually owned by Coca-Cola. Like the beverage industry is kind of wild and it doesn't stop there. There's actually a lot of food industries that are like a conglomerate, which I think, again, people know a little bit about. But if we were to deep dive this, I think it would be a wild and fascinating listen. So I actually did know that Coca-Cola was in the orange juice game because a fun little fact, Coca-Cola owns the Simply lines, like Simply Orange Juice. And it was their fastest growing, most successful line until Fairlife came along. I was going to say until greening in Florida happened. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Until Fairlife came along and we blew their stats out of the water because their life has been so wildly successful. So I am excited to actually deep dive that conversation because I feel like I come from it in like, it's crazy that everything's owned by like PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. I also come from it from the fact that like, you know, we were a co-op, we were not a distribution, like center. And so partnering with Coca-Cola was so incredibly amazing and powerful for us because it helped us with distribution Mm -hmm. and so many other things, manufacturing, branding, all of these things, you know? And so like it is, it can be a really amazing thing. And I know it also is like a really scary thing that like all of our brands are owned by you know, a handful of companies. So I am so, so excited for that deep dive as Natalie alluded to some exciting things coming in July for Discover Ag. So stay tuned. 